Monopoly is a high stakes tabletop board game in which players take part in the battle of capitalism, currency and corruption, with the main aim of the game literally being to make the other players go bankrupt. I've got nothing left! <laughs> With the creation of the game dating back to around 1903, Monopoly is one of the biggest board games on the planet. Now I'm sure most of you that have played the game of Monopoly have either encountered the English or American version of the board game, but trust me, there is thousands of versions of the game out there, some a lot weirder than others. Monopoly, Horse Lovers Edition. Monopoly, Cat Lovers Edition. Fortnite Monopoly, Gay Monopoly. And my personal favorite, Monopoly, Bass Fishing Edition. Currently, in Cambridge, it's 45 degrees with showers. You know, if you want to play Monopoly while you fish for bass, I guess. Monopoly and Super Mario join forces in Monopoly Gamer from Hasbro Gaming. Oh no! <laughs> anyway, each player starts with 1,500 Monopoly dollars, or enough to buy 84.3 Lego Yoda Star Wars, Yoda Chronicle Clone Wars, 75017 Lego minifigures, with lightsaber included. <laughs> Once each player receives their starting amount, before the game begins, it is important that you elect one player to become the banker. <laughs> As the banker, it's that player's responsibility to be in control of the bank, a seemingly endless supply of Monopoly cash. The banker controls all of the money that goes in and out of the bank, dealing each player the amount of money they earn or owe throughout the game, handing out cash here, there and everywhere. The banker is basically the Bill Gates of the Monopoly world. Next, it's time to choose your piece. This piece is a representation of you, so choose carefully. There has been a number of different Monopoly character pieces throughout the years, such unstoppable piece designs as a battleship, a race car, a T-Rex, and a wheelbarrow. So once each player has selected their piece of choice, the game can begin. Rolling the dice, you move clockwise around the board, making sure to collect $200 every time you pass go. And fun fact, you could literally pass go a million times in your lifetime and you still somehow get excited to receive $200. And even though every single player on the board is aware of this rule and every single player also receives $200 for passing go, you can't help yourself but brag about the fact that you have just performed a simple mechanic of the game for 200 measly dollars. Now, as you slowly make your way around the Monopoly board, you will encounter property cards. The two properties. Property. Properties. I'm a landlord. Now, properties are a huge part of Monopoly. These property cards are all over the board, with properties getting progressively better the further around the board you get. A blatant obvious divide, with the brown properties at the start of the board being shithole crack dens that cost near nothing to purchase, compared to the dark blue properties at the end of the board being luxury villas in the hills of Monaco that are virtually priceless. You know what I like a lot more than materialistic things? This Lamborghini here. The more you learn, the more you Lamborghini. Now each time you land on one of these property cards, you have the option to buy it outright like the property developer you are, or if you want to cause chaos, you can auction that shit. Now, Monopoly property auctions is a lot like dropping a Big Mac into a piranha-infested lake. These auctions allow other players on the board to bid on that property card in a battle to the death, with the true victor then taking ownership of that property. Property ownership truly is the key to getting your Monopoly victory royale. Simply put, if you own a property, each time another player lands on your property, you can go full Karen mode and charge them the fee just for standing on your land. But it gets better. Manage to own a full set of property cards and you can then erect houses or if you're really advanced, hotels. Which means if a player is unlucky enough to land on your properties with a hotel on them, you can rinse them for all of their money with a slapping big fine. And if you somehow go far enough to own all the properties on one side of the board, make sure to slap hotels on those bastards and make that side of the board Death Valley, with it being practically impossible for the other players to avoid landing on your properties as you watch the cash roll in. There is also four train stations around the map that you can buy if you're that person that spends the whole game trying to get all four to fulfill their locomotive fueled mission. As well as a waterworks and electric company, but who gives a shit about those? You can't build a hotel in a power plant. Monopoly really is the only game out there where you can manage eight high-end properties whilst owning four train stations whilst simultaneously being a dog. 
Now, bear in mind, at any point throughout the game, players can offer you a trade. Now, trading is a great part of the game, in my opinion. Players will offer you money or other property cards for your properties, and it's completely up to you if you want to accept these trade offers, but just be wise and don't get scammed. These trades can get pretty heated if someone is after a specific property that you own. Now, there are also two little squares that you must be made aware of. Being placed on the board by Mr. Monopoly himself to spice the game up, these squares correspond to a set of cards that are ominously placed in the middle of the board. Community chest and chance cards. Once you land on these squares, you must pick up the corresponding card and follow whatever task or forfeit you are given. Community chest. These cards are mostly about giving and receiving money. Most of the time, they're good. God, you're so beautiful. Bank error in your favor. Collect $200. Income tax refund. Collect $20. And by far the best one, it is your birthday. Collect $10 from each player. You know what? It's not my fucking birthday community chest, but I will take it. But these community chest cards aren't always good. Sometimes you get offered up such shit as doctor's fees. Pay $50. School fees. Pay $50. And hospital fees. Pay $50. You know what? Come to think of it, it's a lot like real life. Taxes. Taxes. Now, depending on what rules you personally play the game by, these fees should go straight into the bank, but the best way to play the game is to shove all of these fees into the middle of the board, and then whatever lucky bastard lands on the pointless square that is free parking, then receives all of these tax riches to themselves. And trust me, however much you cross your fingers, it will never be you landing on this square. Now, chance cards aren't too dissimilar to community chess cards, but they seem to move you around the board a lot more. Move back three spaces, sending you to a specific property. But God forbid, you get the dreaded go to jail card. Go directly to jail. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. A message so blunt that just reading it is enough to strike fear into the heart of any man. But if you do receive this card, you are banished over to the jail where you sit there for three moves. Well, unless you drop the warden in a swift 50 to get out early. But if you don't do this, you are bound to a jail cell with this creepy goblin looking motherfucker. And to make it even worse, other players can stand there and just visit you. And it doesn't even matter if you don't get the go to jail card because you can still end up in this hellhole just by accidentally landing on a dedicated square that sends you to jail. What an evil world we live in. Put yourself back in jail. No. Put yourself back in jail. Put yourself back in jail. No. But never fear. There is a single sacred item out there, an item that is so special it will save you from enduring the pain and suffering of this wretched place. The one, the only, the holy get out of jail free card. But make sure you use this shit wisely because boy is it special. When that cop tries to cuff you, pull that shit out like an Uno reverse card and you're free to walk. No criminal record. I mean, if you don't have one of these cards, you can always try and roll a double to get out of jail. But let's be honest, how often has this worked for you? So now you know the rules of the game. Get out there, channel your inner billionaire as you purchase every property in sight, charging people money for trespassing on your land, offering trade deals left and right, bribing police officers, and trying to drive your fellow players into the ground as they enter a state of bankruptcy. Monopoly is a great game to pass the time, and by time, I mean 46 Six years of your waking life. When you finally realise that you are the last one standing at the board and you've won the game, you look around to realise that all of your fellow players have either fallen asleep, gone home or died. And you question if playing the game was even really worth it in the first place. But who cares because you now own four imaginary train stations. But with all of that said, goodbye.